All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, thanks again for those who were able to join. My name is Jerry Bartles. I'm a civil technical specialist here at Autodesk. During today's presentation, we're gonna be talking about creating higher value geometry using some of the geometric cleanup tools in Civil 3D. We have map cleanup tools because they're associated primarily with map 3D. If this is the first one of these sessions you've been to, from a, a, the 30 minute workout perspective. Uh, welcome aboard. If uh, this is uh, more than one that you've been to, welcome back. Uh, the purpose behind these presentations is typically when folks learn uh, Autodesk solutions, they focus primarily on the things that they need immediately for their job. And the tools are capable of doing so much that there isn't always time to, to cover the things that are outside of just the need to know uh, features and functions. So what we wanted to do is, you know, take those things that typically you learn over time, uh, in some cases a lifetime of using the tools, uh, spend some uh, um, cycles going through what those do, how they work, and see if they can provide some value for you. So uh, when we go through our examples, we try and use the examples that are a bit abstract so that we're not focused on a particular, you know, design or, or trying to accomplish a particular task, but instead showing you what the tool does and how the tool works. If at any time you have any questions over what we're covering, please put those in the Q&A pane. We'll uh, see if we have some time for questions at the end. If not, uh, we will certainly get back to anybody that had questions or after this session is over, please feel free to reach out to uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff Bartles, myself, or Dana um, Judge. We uh, will be happy to uh, have a conversation with you about anything that we've shown here. These sessions will be recorded. Anybody that's registered or attended the sessions will receive a copy of that recording. So what we're gonna be taking a look at today, in particular, the actual command is called map clean. It allows us to go through and peruse our geometry and uh, make some adjustments to that geometry where need be. Uh, typically in cases where there might be some issues, could be deleting duplicates, uh, short objects, uh, dissolving pseudo nodes, undershoots, overshoots, dangling objects. We'll, we'll talk about what a lot of those things are. The important thing is from a geometric standpoint, where these, things can happen and why this is important to us is because we get geometry, especially in the civil space from a lot of different locations, uh, depending on who created it. Uh, maybe it was data that was converted, maybe ultimately what it was, uh, you know, its origin or where it came from. Uh, the geometry itself may have some, some issues with it that we'd like to correct before we use that geometry further down and start making design decisions and uh, relying on the geometry too much after that. If we're gonna clean this geometry, we're gonna to need to know ways to select those objects. And then if there's a lot of objects, ways that we can do things interactively or, or automatic. And if I've got time, we'll, we'll delve into some bonus content as well. So with that being said, let me minimize this. And the first thing I wanna look at from a clean perspective is deleting duplicates. Now there's probably a lot of folks that are thinking, hey, we've had delete duplicates and the AutoCAD world, at least for a long time with respect to a tool, it's called Express Tools. That tool is called Overkill. Uh, you may ask, is it different than the tool that we have here? And the answer is yes. Um, do they do different things? The answer is yes. Is one better than the other? It depends, depending on what exactly it is we're trying to accomplish. So I just wanna let you know that this is a different uh, feature or facet from that. If we're gonna access the tool that we're looking at today, it's, it's all built into a wizard that we can access by using a command called map clean. So I'm gonna type that into the command line here. We'll execute map clean. We get our dialog. If we're gonna look at delete duplicates, in this case, I've got two objects on top of each other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select uh, objects manually here quickly. We'll, as we do some different examples, we'll cover some other areas of the tool. I'm gonna select those objects here. We'll select those on the screen. You see that it found two. And then what we're going to do is uh, we will go over to next. Here's our options that we're going to use for cleanup options. There are a number of those. I'm gonna add delete duplicates to my selected actions. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say finish. And when I click on finish, it says that modified object zero, deleted objects one, created object zero. We'll talk about all of this in more detail as we go through. So for example, if I were to say erase and window this area right now, it shows that there's only one object there where in the past there was you know, two or perhaps more. The beauty of this, in this case, it's just a couple of objects. 
If we were to select a much larger drawing, this would go through and comb through all of our geometry and find things that are duplicate and give us the opportunity to correct that. At the same time, we may also have instances within our, our project or our geometry that we want to erase some short objects. Here's an example of this, maybe a situation where we've got some geometry. We'd like to clean that up because these short objects are, are unnecessary and maybe in this polyline, uh, I'd like to you know, clean up some short segments that are unnecessary as well so that what I'm left with is you know, maybe the, uh, um, the uh, objective or the intent of the geometry that we're working with. So let's do this. I'm going to access the command again. I'm going to hit the up arrow. It's going to let me go back into map clean. If we go into map clean, what we're going to do is in this case, I can select items manually or I can select all items. We're going to focus on, on manually for right now. We'll look at an instance for all in, in a moment. Um, the layer here is something we can drill into as well. I could go into a specific layer here. The information currently exists on a layer called geometry. So we're going to go ahead and select that. So I can select manually those things that exist on the geometric layer and I can window these objects. Okay, we'll go ahead and hit enter. Now, if we're going to say that we're going to erase short objects, that's kind of relative. You know, what, uh, what does short mean? You know, we want to be able to define that. Well, there's a, a tool. We'll go ahead, I'm gonna cancel out of this for just a second. There's a, a setting for that that's important. We're gonna go ahead and grab this. I'm gonna scroll up and turn a layer on here. What is gonna control that, what defines what short is, is tolerance. And a lot of the commands that we're gonna use will leverage a tolerance as part of that. Even if we were to come back and look at duplicates, there is a tolerance we can apply so that it doesn't have to necessarily be exactly the same. We can say that the endpoints for this object can deviate within a particular range and that will be determined as a duplicate as well. So let's do this. We'll go back into that same command. I'm gonna hit the up arrow, map clean. We will say select manual. I will grab those things that are on the geometry layer. So we'll grab this guy. We'll say next, oops, we will say, we'll tell it the layer, but because we're gonna do manual, we're gonna select the geometry. That's only gonna grab the, uh, the line work. So this would grab everything. Uh, this would grab those things that are manual that are on that layer where this would do all things that are on, on those layers. So you can really fine tune what we're picking. We're gonna go ahead and say next. Duplicates had a tolerance. I'm gonna remove duplicates from my list right now. We're gonna say erase short objects. And this is where I would put in the parameter as far as what's an applicable thing I would like to get rid of as far as a distance. We're just doing an abstract thing here. Instead of putting in a number, I'm going to go ahead and just pick two points. So I'm going to pick two points that are longer than the items that I would like to get rid of. Typically, we're not going to be doing things that are 12, 13 feet. It's going to be things that are going to be much smaller than that, depending on what we're using it for. I'm going to go ahead and click on finish. And when we click on finish, we see that those segments were automatically removed. So modified objects one, which was the polyline, deleted objects two, which were the two specs and no objects were created. So we're left with what, uh, what we see in the after. Okay, let's take a step over <clears throat> breaking crossing objects. In an instance where I've got two segments that cross over the top of each other, I may have geometry in a number of different locations that I would like to have them all broken at the vertices. So instead I would have multiple objects that meet at one point. We could have this with property lines, any number of things. Let's, uh, let's go back into that tool to make this a little bit easier. We'll grab it from another location. I'm gonna switch my workspace to planning and analysis, which will focus on the tools for map. And then I'm gonna come up to the tools area of the ribbon and we'll see there's an option here for drawing cleanup that will let us uh, launch the same command. So we'll go ahead and, and launch that. Select manually. We'll go ahead and uh, use geometry is gonna be good. We will select objects. I'm going to select these objects. Next, I'm going to remove the uh, what we had before. We will say break crossing objects and I will say add. One other thing I'll, I'll mention if we're going to select objects, especially if we're doing all. Uh, all is something that we'll use in, in individual cases where we really want to evaluate all the geometry. In other cases, we really want to focus it down by layer and things manually. 
in the in the instructions if we go through this tool it says to also be care be careful of things that are on layers that are off or maybe in a different space in other words if i have things in a layout um, this tool is going to examine the drawing at kind of like the database level so some things that are off may participate because those things aren't really gone uh, those things in a different um, layout or in paper space may also participate in this command as well and we may not want that so ideally, if we're gonna be selecting things, we really wanna focus on that, freeze things that we absolutely don't want selected or be very uh, um, surgical about the things that we're grabbing so that we don't have things happen with uh, geometry in a place that maybe we're not concentrating on. Okay, so we selected that geometry, we'll say next. I'm gonna remove this guy, we will say uh, break crossing objects, add that to the list. I'm gonna go ahead and say finish, that's done and if we look, these objects are now broken into multiple pieces. Okay, so whether there was two or four or a thousand, it'll go through that quick and make those changes. Extending undershoots. Anywhere I have geometry that may fall short of where I'd like it to go, I can apply a tolerance and have it automatically correct that geometry. Let's go into drawing cleanup, select manually. We will select the objects on the geometric layer. I'm gonna go ahead and say next. We'll remove what we had before and we're gonna say extend undershoots. I'm gonna add that to my list. My tolerance that I'm gonna use for this particular command is anything that could be extended. You know, the distance of those two lines right there is what we'll, uh, we'll use. In this particular case, instead of just having it automatically happen, you know, I'd like to be able to participate in where the, uh, the changes are made. I'm gonna set this to interactive because not all things do we want it to just go out and do it. I wanna have some say, maybe it identifies a situation I don't want corrected. So I'm gonna say uh, interactive, we'll say next. As it goes through and does this, we won't focus a lot on this today. We could spend a half an hour just on these tools, but in any of the cleanup that we do, we have the option to say modify the original objects. We can say retain the originals and create new objects if there's any changes, kind of like non-destructive. We could say delete the original objects and create new objects to replace them. We can also use this tool to do some conversions on, on things along the way. Not gonna worry about those for right now. We'll go ahead and say next. Because I set it to interactive, there are error markers that will be placed for all the different things that I'm searching for. In this particular case, we're looking at extending undershoots, so we'll get an octagon with a, a green color that will be used. When we say finish, it will evaluate the drawing and it will tell me in that category, there are three errors that it found, which makes sense. We see those three there. If I highlight on the list, I can come in and I can start to zoom in and out on what it identifies. If I lose the little marker that it shows, I can add a new marker here so that I can see that. And then I could go through and either fix it, I can remove it from the list, or I could just jump to the next one because I'll come back to it later. So in this case, we'll say fix this one. I'll fix this one. And just for the, the sake of uh, argument, we'll go ahead and remove that from the list. And when I hit close, that's when it completes the command. We see those two were corrected. This one was left alone. Okay. Very powerful tool there, especially if we're looking at, at things like property lines or other things like that we could correct. Because I said property lines, let me throw this out. Some folks may be wondering if this works with civil 3D objects. I wish that I could tell you that it does, but it does not. It works on lines, polylines, points, text, blocks, things like that. It will not work on the civil objects, but that being said, because this is a QA, QC analysis type tool, this is a tool that we will more or less use as a um, we'll make sure the geometry is good before we turn it into parcels and feature lines and uh, center line alignments and things like that. Okay, once again, depending on where that data is coming from. In this particular case, if I have geometry that could be extended to an intersection, we can use the tool to do something like that. So let's take a quick look. We will uh, extend geometry, select these objects, we'll clear out my list. I'll say uh, apparent intersection. My tolerance is gonna be a distance that would encompass both, you know, whatever my purpose is for that. I'm gonna set it back to automatic right now just for the, to, to get through some of these. We'll go ahead and say finish. And that automatically found those as well as potentially, you know, hundreds or, or whatever more instances and correct those. Let's come back and say snap clustered nodes. 
If you've got a bunch of points that come together in a location within your tolerance, you'd like them to be joined at one point, we can have the, the software go ahead and clean that up. If you're doing things like uh, determining a boundary, calculating an area, things like that, where you may have broken areas, this can go through and fix some of that. So we'll say select manually. I'm gonna grab my geometry. We'll go ahead and say next, remove the old one. We'll say slap clustered nodes. Tolerance that I'm going to use, I'm gonna pick a uh, radius that would encompass you know, all of those endpoints. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say snap to link. I wanna make sure and do that because it'll snap to the line work as opposed to trying to snap to nodes. So we'll say snap to link. And when I click on finish, it goes ahead and cleans up those objects. Now, if I do that, I'm gonna hit U for undo, backs it off, I'll hit R for redo or redo. And now I can't do that because I did redraw. Very important to do a redo, redo after the undo. Uh, the thing that I wanted to show you was that it, it's automatically jumping to this point. All right, why is it jumping to that? There's probably some mathematics behind it, but you know what? This may be the one that's maybe the most accurate. Is there a way that I can hold that one because I like that one and make the rest of them go to there? Short answer to that is, is yes, I can do that here. I'm going to say drawing cleanup. Uh, remembers the last tools that we used. Oops, we, we do have to select the geometry again. We'll go ahead and say next. Snap clustered nodes, same thing, but I'm going to do this. Before I move on, there's an area down here that says objects to anchor. I'm gonna say select manually and I'm gonna grab this guy. I'm gonna anchor that because that's the most important one for me. Snap clustered nodes, my distance snap to link is good. We'll click finish and if you watch, you see they all went down and they merged at that point. All right, this can be used for like cleaning up edges, lots of, uh, lots of stuff, very powerful tool we can use. Dissolve pseudo nodes. Basically, that can do some automatic polyline creation. Uh, in this case, I've got uh, you know two polylines. They could just be arcs. They could be line segments. I've got two polylines, one red and one blue. If I were to select this geometry, basically what it would do is it would merge them into a single polyline. So we'll go ahead and remove that. Say dissolve pseudo nodes. Add that to my list. We'll say uh, finish. And when we uh, click on finish, it now becomes you know, one, one polyline object. All right, it's an instance where, you know what, I wanna group a lot of this stuff together, turn them into polylines at the same time so they're not individual segments. Dissolve pseudo nodes would allow us to do that. Erase dangling objects. Dangling objects are those areas where we may have geometry that extends a little bit beyond where it should. I'd like to find all of those situations and correct them. In this particular case, we're gonna now look at coupling that with some of the other ones we've had, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna break the object first at this point and then erase the dangling object. So this is where we can start tying multiple ones together to make these tools even more powerful. So I'm gonna grab my geometry. We'll say next. I'm gonna remove this from my list. We're gonna say break crossing objects, which means it will do that first. Then I'm gonna say erase dangling objects and it will go through and perform that operation next. And the tolerance that I'm gonna use is gonna be the distance you know, longer than whatever I'd like to get rid of. I'm just gonna do this automatically at this point. I could do it interactive once again, we won't do it right now just for sake of time. We'll click on finish and it automatically cleans up that geometry. Okay, let's take a look at a couple more. We'll come back. Simplifying objects. We get geometry from a lot of different places depending on what created it. Some of it could be, you know, a lot of additional, you know, vertices. We'd like to clean some of that up. I don't need as much detail. We could use simplify objects. What it will do is go through and say, okay, based on the tolerance, it's going to start here. Uh, the next point, anything that falls in between here, it can start to weed out what it would consider unnecessary ones. So it would go from here out to this, it's outside the tolerance, back to here, outside the tolerance, back into here. And then as it continues to work its way on within the, the tolerance, it would start to weed some of those out and end at the end. So it's another instance where we might couple that with uh, another tool being delete duplicates. So we'll grab geometry. Because I'm doing it with a geometric layer is why I can grab the green objects as well. We'll go ahead and remove these guys. We'll say delete duplicates. And then we're gonna follow that up with simplify objects. And the tolerance that I'm gonna to use to pick is gonna be basically you know, that, that distance there. Once again, much larger numbers than what we would typically be doing, but just the abstract example I have 
That's what we're working with. We'll go ahead and say finish. And when it cleans that up, I've got a simplified version of that polyline that doesn't have nearly as many vertices as what it had before. Two other quick ones I want to look at here, weeding polylines. Anybody that's weeded contours before, if I've got a polyline that's got a ton of vertices and I've got other polylines that are long segments that don't have as many vertices, if I'd like to break these into more consistent segments as much as I can without losing detail, maybe I'd like to, as my result, have it broken into smaller segments here when it's long, remove some of the unnecessary ones here. We can use drawing cleanup to address those. Let's select these tools or these objects. We'll say next. I'm gonna remove these guys. We'll say I'd like to uh, weed polylines and then I've got the same um, weeding and supplementing factors I would have historically. In this particular case, just with my geometry, I'm gonna weed, uh, weed anything that is, uh, we'll say 12. If I've got multiple vertices within 12 feet, it'll start to take some of those out. If I've got some segments that are longer than 20 feet, it's gonna start to add some in. We'll go ahead and click on finish. And now when I look at this, it's got fewer vertices than what it had before. And when I click on this, it's broken into individual pieces. Okay, sometimes we need to do that. Contours is a great example. There's a tool in Civil 3D that does that, but we may also need to do it to simplify uh, or clean up uh, dresses, the edges of a creek and things like that. All right, zero length objects. Zero length objects are kind of interesting because we really can't even see them. And why we can't see them is, is important because if we can't see them, they not only they take up space, but they can also cause you know, things to not function properly could even cause some problems during calculations and that. Uh, let's do this. I'm gonna go through drawing cleanup. This is an example where I'm gonna have it view the entire file. So I'm gonna say select all. I'm gonna put an asterisk in because I've got other geometry in here. We'll say next, I'm gonna go ahead and remove that from my list and we're gonna say zero length objects. I'm gonna have it comb through the entire drawing. I am not going to have it do it automatic because I wanna see what it's actually finding. So we'll say interactive and we'll say finish. It didn't find any zero length objects, but it did find some zero length polyline segments. So I'm gonna go ahead and select to see where that is. So right here, if we turn on the marker, I have a zero length segment in my polyline. That can cause me problems computing areas, doing other things with that polyline. But what I like to do, I'll go ahead and fix that. I've got another instance of it right here. Um, I'm zooming in and out with the wheel. I can also tweak this uh, here to bump up my zoom factor, click in the box, I can zoom up closer. I, you know what, I'm just gonna have it go ahead and correct that one as well. So both of those are fixed. The beauty of that is I comb through that entire file and in that file, there was two examples that I'm telling you, I would have never been able to find it myself. Uh, that found it for us and it found it for us very quickly. Let's take a look at bringing some of these together. Um, I've got some geometry here. Uh, let's go ahead and say that this geometry was good. I'm bringing in geometry from, from another location. I'm going to take a look at my layers here for just a moment. And we're going to turn on another, another layer. I've got some new geometry that came in, but we can see it doesn't line up really well with the geometry that's here. Four instances could be lots more as I'm merging things together. I could use that snap clustered nodes that we've been talking about so far to correct that immediately. So I can say drawing cleanup. We're gonna go ahead and say uh, select manually. I'm gonna select these objects and the objects on this side. We'll say that I'd like to uh, remove this. We'll say snap clustered nodes. Let's see right there. Pick my, uh, my tolerance. Uh, I'm gonna pick a distance longer than what I need to fix, snap to link. <clears throat> and I'm gonna do one more thing. If this is a side that I wanna keep, then I wanna make sure that this is a side that gets adjusted. So I'm gonna step back. I should have done that before we moved, but we'll say anchor, and I'm manually gonna select these objects. So we'll say next. It remembers what we did, so I didn't lose anything there. We'll go ahead and say automatic. We'll say finish. And when those things correct, those now line up perfectly and I just adjusted geometry, like I said, if this is accurate, this is just something I'm trying to match to, to show how it works, we can quickly do that. Let's look at one more example where we can start to couple a lot of these together. 
I've got some geometry here with these trees, all right? It's, it's arcs that represent trees. They kind of cross over the top of each other. Uh, I would like to turn this into a polyline and I'd like to clean it up so I don't have all of the, the crossing segments, all right? Uh, I've got the ends here don't match. Lots of things that I, I can do with that. If we hover over this, I can see that it's on a layer that ends in 40 is what we'll work with. So let's take a quick look at that. I'm gonna say drawing cleanup. I'm gonna say uh, select manually and I'm gonna grab that layer that ends in 40. And when we search, we wanna make sure and keep uh, aware of the fact that when they're sorted, they're numeric, but they're sorted alphabetically. We're gonna go ahead and, oops, we'll say uh, we'll select all, everything that's on that layer. We'll say next, we'll remove this. First thing I wanna do, I'm going to uh, delete any duplicates because that's just always a good practice. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break any crossing objects so that I can get rid of these stubs on the end. Next thing I'm gonna do is if we're gonna break the crossing objects, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of any uh, dangling objects that exist. And the distance that I'm gonna put in is gonna be longer than any of the ones that I wanna get rid of. Then after we erase the dangling objects, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and say snap clustered nodes. I'm gonna add that to the list that we'll do next. And then as far as the distance that I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna kind of pick a distance that would close off anything that may not touch on the ends. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say dissolve pseudo nodes, which is gonna turn the whole thing into a polyline. All right, I could go through and verify all those interactively as we go. I'm just gonna go ahead and say finish. And when we click on finish, we see that update and we see that my uh, tree area is all cleaned up and is a polyline. If there's any area for any of these anywhere that is not cleaned up, then it's because I had a parameter that was outside the area that I was working with. All right, fantastic tool, being able to do that. Can I take it one step further? You know what, hey, I do stuff like this a lot. Maybe I've got five drawings I need to do this on. Can I automate this to some extent? I can. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to drawing cleanup. Everything that I did before is still in here. I'm gonna save this to a file and we'll just call it uh, uh, TD for tree demo right now. It's got a DPF extension. We'll say save and I'm gonna say finish. So that what I could do in the future, obviously, is I could select this, come back and we could say uh, load, put this in and it would automatically load those parameters. All right, so we could do that, it's fairly academic. I'm sure everybody here would have seen that before. But what I wanna do to, to close this out, I always like to show how maybe we can build some other commands. What I'm gonna do here is we'll say undo, and I'm gonna say undo back. It's gonna take me back through time all the way to the point where my, I started this file. So basically I just eliminated all of the corrections that I made. We see my uh, trees here are back to the way that they were before. Let's build myself an easy button that if I have 10 other drawings that I need to do with respect to trees, um, that I can make those, uh, those quick changes. So I'm going to uh, reduce this. I'm gonna create a uh, new file here. We'll call this uh, 30minute.lsp. And we'll just create a uh, one, one, uh, one line Lisp routine like we've seen in some of the other videos. I've, uh, some of the videos we've done previously or the sessions, we've devoted more time to this. So just to uh, reinforce what we've looked at, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say defun, and the defined function I'm gonna do is gonna be my easy button, and I'll close parentheses on that. I'm then gonna go in and tell it what to run. I'm gonna say I wanna run the command. I can't run the dialogue uh, because I can't push buttons through a Lisp routine. So instead I'm gonna run map clean with the minus sign in front of it, that will give me the command line version. And if we run the command line version, the only thing that it can accept as a parameter is the name of the thing that we're loading. So we're gonna say C colon demo, we'll say uh, td.dpf is the name of the file. Close quotes. We'll close that off and just to clean up the Lisp routine at the end so that it doesn't uh, respond with nil, we'll go ahead and put that in to complete it. We'll go ahead and save that. All right, let's minimize this. I'm back at the beginning. I'm gonna take this Lisp routine. I'm gonna drag it in here. I'm gonna drop it into my file. It says, hey, you just added some stuff in here. What do you wanna do? I'm gonna load this once. Don't need to load it all the time. We'll just load it once for now. Any machine I'd wanna run it on, I've now got a command that's called easy. So we would come in here 
And based on what we were looking at, we'd start to type it in the autocomplete. It's part of that as we go. I'll go ahead and hit easy. And it says it can't find the, uh, the profile. Let me take a look at this uh, quickly. Actually, I've probably got something um, in the folder that's incorrect just with respect to time. I've got this one here that I did, uh, I did earlier. I might have something uh, incorrect with what I wrote there just to show you this quickly. We'll drag this guy in. We'll say load once. We'll say easy. We'll hit enter. And it went through and automated the process of doing that for us. All right, so it is possible. Uh, apologize, I've got a typo just with respect to time. I wanna be respectful of your time. I won't go through and correct that for right now, but uh, we can use this to automate it as well. So with that, we're, uh, we're drawing close to the top of the hour. From a question standpoint, I can see that there were some in the window. I'll just pause briefly to see, uh, Dana, Jeff, anything we need to take care of um, at this particular only, point? I think I got them all except for one. Um, what happens if the lines are non-coplanar? Will this still work? And that uh, may be something we need to get back at. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we can, uh, we can, yeah, that'd be something we, we follow up on with this non-coplanar. Okay. It, it would depend on, on what, we're, what we're actually doing with the, uh, the cleanup, what the operation is. Awesome. So with that, uh, thank you all very much for your time and attention. We appreciate you spending some time with us today. We, uh, we value your time and we know your time is valuable and we appreciate you investing some of that with us today. Uh, thanks for attending. We look forward to seeing you again in another, in another session. We'll be sending the recordings out for these soon. Have a uh, great rest of the day. See ya.